Hey, it's Aaron Dandelon. This is the second video in my 3ds Max speed tip series, and this one I'm covering a technique I call lazy UVs. Uh, nobody likes unwrapping a bunch of stuff, uh, it takes a lot of time, isn't very fun. Uh, so this is a technique that I uh, came up with for uh, quickly applying uh, UVW coordinates to an object that doesn't have tiling, stretching, all that kind of stuff. You can use texture maps for it, and uh, it works really quick, really easy, and uh, here we go. Let's start by throwing a map on this asteroid object, which was created using my Debris Maker tool, which is in development. So let's just toss this bitmap right onto it, and off the bat it doesn't have UVs. Let's go ahead and toss a UVW map on there, and you can see pretty bad stretching. If we tick through, you can see that no matter what of these procedural methods, we end up with stretching or pinching that we probably aren't going to want. Box usually works out pretty nice. But if you end up using this for displacement, you're going to have a real problem along seams like this. If we switch to spherical and edit our tiling a little bit, you can see we're getting a pretty good result overall. However, there's some pinching up here and down here. A planar map would do a good job covering those up, but for the rest of the object, it works really well. That's the benefit of the spherical map but it has a real drawback in the area where the planar map could work. If we switch this to planar, you can see it does this area very well, but stretches all along the sides. An easy way to combine these two is using a composite material. I'm going to switch this back to a spherical map, and just for convenience, rename this 1. This is going to denote that I'm using map channel 1. When I add another UVW map, you can see that we're already doing planar, and I'm just going to change this to channel 2 and name it accordingly. Now let's blend this together in a composite material. Opening up the material editor, I'm going to retrieve this material off of the object and look at its maps. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, change it from a bitmap to a composite material, and I'm going to keep this old map as a submap. So right off the bat we've got our first texture map using an explicit map channel 1, which is our spherical map, and if we go ahead and render this, you can see we've got that stretching up there. So I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. So I'm going to copy, and then paste a copy into this second layer. In this texture map, I'm going to change its map channel to 2. Now it's going to use that second channel, planar projection. If we go back up a level and do a test frame, you'll see that our planar projection is smearing all the way across this. So I'm going to go here into my mask on this composite material and do a gradient ramp. Let's go ahead and show this in the viewport and change it to use map channel 2, which is our planar projection from the top. Going down, I'll change my gradient type to radial and change my flags. What I want is to show just a white area in the center and fade off to black on the edges. This isn't quite enough, so I'll go ahead and add a little bit more. You can see overall where this map is going to go, and we only need this to cover up just that pinching that's up at the top. Introducing a little bit of noise is good to break up that border, and that should be just about it. So now I've got the same texture map doing a spherical and a planar projection and taking the best parts of both. Let's go ahead and show this in the viewport. Go ahead and do a test frame. And you can see that we have our rock without any tiling or seams on it at all. Once this material is set up, you can duplicate it a bunch of times, and you can also copy and paste your modifiers onto other objects. So once this little bit of setup is done, you have procedurally laid out UVs for a ton of objects. And I intend to make a script in the near future that will automate this whole process for you. Since I'm lazy, this is a great way to get around having to lay out UVs. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked what you saw, keep an eye out for more. They'll be coming. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Dablo.